So, get ready for this story. My dog Buck and I had gone out to Pedernales Falls State Park for a day of adventure in the Texas wilderness. It was a day that was perfect for some good old-fashioned peace and quiet. Buck and I, we'd been going to this park for years. It's funny, I almost felt like the park was mine in some way. It was early morning when we got there, and the sun was just peeking over the tree line, the mist still hanging over the falls. Buck's high strung, always full of energy, to the point where I can't keep up half the time. If there's a squirrel, a deer, or a whiff of something interesting, he'll be off, and I'll hear his happy yelps echoing across the park. We began the day with a walk along one of the hiking trails. It was a winding, tree-covered path that kept out the sun and heat, the way the sun filters through branches and leaves and the sound of water rushing over the rocks was something straight out of a picture book. I ate my packed lunch and I played fetch with Buck. He'd never get tired of that game. I swear that dog could probably beat a marathon runner. He'd bring back the slobber covered ball, dropping it at my feet before prancing back a couple of steps, tail wagging in anticipation for me to throw it again. By mid afternoon, I was relaxing under the shade of an enormous cottonwood, reading a book I had brought along while Buck was lying next to me. I must have dozed off at some point because I remember being tugged from the edges of sleep by a loud, jarring noise. Not a noise that belongs out here in the wilderness, but something guttural and resonating, like a metal barrel being dragged over rocks. Startled, I shook the sleep off and looked around to pinpoint the direction. Buck was already on his feet, his ears perked up eyes narrowed and a low growl rumbling in his chest. Something was off. The birds were quiet as if they too had been jolted by this noise. Taking Buck on his leash, we started to follow the noise drifting deeper into the park. The signal on my phone was growing weaker with every step and I thought about turning back around. Buck was tense by my side, his nose in the air, eyes darting around. And then it hit me, this smell. It was a sharp musk like old garbage, pungent enough to wrinkle my nose. It hung heavily in the air like some unseen fog. Whatever was making that sound, I thought must be connected to that smell. The odds of running into two strange occurrences in the forest were incredibly low. They had to be connected. A bit deeper into the forest, and I felt a sudden chill, and yet the weather was warm. Feeling Buck's fur raised under my hand, hearing the weird racket and that god-awful smell swirling around us. It didn't take much to figure out that maybe following this was a bad idea. I decided to head back to where I'd left my stuff. Buck seemed eager to turn back too. But before I had the chance to turn around, there was this loud rustling sound from behind the thick brush. I've seen bears at a distance on hikes before. I know what they look like and how they move. This wasn't a bear. The shape of it was all wrong. Buck started barking, a deep, threatening bark that I'd only heard out of him once or twice before when he thought something we were in danger. The hairs on the back of my neck stood straight up. I was armed with nothing but my pocket knife and Buck. As I watched frozen in place, the rustling turned into heavy, deliberate movements, and then there it was. Breaking the brush was what I can only describe as a monster. I'd never seen the likes of it before or since. It was tall, around eight feet if I had to guess, and covered all over with reddish-brown hair, kind of like how a bear's fur looked. It had large shoulders and a big barrel-like chest, like a damn professional linebacker covered in fur. The smell that hung in the air was overpowering. It was enough to make a man gag, and Buck was whining and pulling at his leash, but never tore his eyes from the creature. The creature's face was odd. The best I can describe it is a cross between a Neanderthal and an ape. Its features were strong with a ridged brow and square jaw. It had the beadiest black eyes, almost lost in that fur-covered face, contracted against the fur on the face. This thing had the most pronounced, solid lips I had ever seen. There were moments of standoff. It made a noise, half growl, half yelp. I couldn't move, couldn't breathe, like some primal part of me recognized that we weren't at the top of the food chain anymore. Suddenly, as if realizing we were no threat at all and almost seeming disgusted, it turned around, trampling back into the wilderness, leaving Buck and me behind, 
hearts pounding in our chests. As terrified as I was, I managed to pull out my phone and click a blurry shot of its retreating back. Trust me, it was much closer than it seems in that photo. Buck and I, we hightailed it out of there. We packed up and left that park faster than ever before. I remember the way the eerie silence hung over the scene as Buck and I took off, my heart pounding in my chest and adrenaline fueling my legs. And just like that, our day of adventure had turned into a scramble for safety. Since then, I've been wrestling with the incident. Did I see an unknown creature or just an abnormally large, deformed bear? I guess I'll never know. Maybe I don't want to. All I know is that it turned a day of enjoyment into a grim reminder of what might be lurking in the unknown, undiscovered pockets of our world. I haven't been back to Pedernale since. My adventurous spirit took a real hit that day, and the incident still sends shivers down my spine. Some force of nature it was. Or maybe, just maybe, it was Sasquatch. But whatever it was, it's a day I'll remember in vivid detail for the rest of my life. Don't quite know what it means, but hell, I'll never forget it. I've always loved water. Everything about it fascinates me. I fell for it when I was just a little girl, and I slowly but surely made it my life's passion to be around it as much as possible. So when the opportunity arose for a cave diving adventure in the Bahamas, I couldn't say no. The dive was scheduled for late July. The weather in the Bahamas was predicted to be at its finest. Clear skies, warm water, sunny days just begging for a swim. But boy, was I in for a surprise that day? It was nothing I could have ever imagined. So there I was, decked out in my diving gear and ready to explore the wonders that lay beneath that picturesque turquoise sea. I'd never seen water so beautiful before. It was clear like glass. I was just so happy to be there. The dive started off smoothly. The water was cool, a refreshing contrast to the blazing sun above, which, if I'm honest, was getting a little too warm for my liking. But then I slipped beneath the water's surface and everything fell into place. Down I went, further into the depths, navigating through the sprawling underwater labyrinth. Oh, it was beautiful. The sight was pure magic. The light from my flashlight bounced off the rock faces, illuminating the jagged features. Schools of brightly colored fish flitted by, the reefs, with all their coral and plant life, were simply amazing. It's like I was floating in an alien world. Then, something in the corner of my vision caught my attention. A shadow, much bigger than the array of fish that swam about. Was it a shipwreck? My heart began to race. Just at the edge of my vision was a vague outline suggesting the hull of a large vessel. I'd heard of shipwrecks being common in these areas, but I never expected to see one for myself. My curiosity was piqued, and there was no way I was going to let this opportunity go by without closer inspection. As I approached, I could smell something odd through my mask. It was a dark, musty odor that I couldn't place. I found it strangely unsettling. The eerie sensation was amplified as something bumped against my leg. A large piece of sea debris or a lost prop from the ship I rationalized, but there was no denying the ripple of unease that ran up my spine. With a slow exhalation of bubbles, I focused my attention on the ship. Its once majestic body lay broken on the seabed. I tried to examine its features, but something else was pulling at my attention. I saw something moving in the edge of the shipwreck's shadow. It wasn't any type of fish and it was too purposeful to be the sway of seaweed. My heart hammered in my chest, and I froze. I couldn't see it directly. It was just a play of shadows, but there was something else there with me. Time seemed to slow down. The tension was unbearable. My training kicked in, telling me to keep controlled, slow breaths despite my pounding heart screaming louder with every beat. I fought the urge to turn back and swim for the surface. Slowly, as if drawn by a magnet, I turned around, trying to hold my light steady. My beam crossed paths with another. 
There were two glowing orbs reflecting back at me. They were huge, hypnotic, and held me in their depth. I felt my breath hitch as I realized what was just before me. I was staring into the gaze of a sea creature. Its size was enormous. I could barely make out its full form. It was serpentine in nature, like a gigantic snake. Its head looked more reptilian than sea monster, but it could clearly breathe underwater just fine. Without another thought, I began to retreat, keeping my motions slow so as not to provoke the beast. But as I moved away, a chilling roar bounced around me, echoing through the water. I could feel it vibrating against my skin. I couldn't tell if it was anger or a warning or just the creature's natural sound. All I knew was that it was unlike anything I'd ever heard before. And then, the water surged. A shockwave trembled through the ocean, throwing me back like a ragdoll. As I spun in the water, an enormous tail passed over me. Somehow, I managed to surface. I can't really recall how. My mind was spinning, tangled with the raw fear, shock, and an uncanny sense of awe. Back on the boat, I stripped off my gear, my hands shaking as the adrenaline started to wear off. The memory of that encounter still lingers with me. The way its eyes held mine, the sound of its powerful roar, and the terror that gripped me still send shivers down my spine each time I recall that day. In the days following, I found no evidence of the creature's existence other than my own stunned memory. The shipwreck, when I dared to return, seemed undisturbed. No signs of monstrous creatures lurking around its hull. My tail was met with polite disbelief or brushed off as a result of nitrogen narcosis, a common ailment for us divers. Still, every time I dive, I can't shake off the feeling of being watched. But instead of fear, a strange excitement fills me. I can't quite tell you why, but I long to see the creature again, just to prove to myself that it was real. There are so many unknown mysteries that lie in the ocean's depths, waiting for explorers like me to discover. Who's to say there aren't monstrous creatures down there in the deep, So there I was, enjoying a beautiful sunny day with my wife at my Aka River State Park in Florida. We'd been looking forward to this outing for weeks, just a nice day out for her and me to enjoy a bit of peace and the wonder of nature. The plan was simple, walk around, watch some birds, and enjoy an easy, leisurely picnic. It was a calm Sunday, the 6th of March, I think, and the park was teeming with the usual outdoor enthusiasts bird watchers, hikers, and families having fun on the green patches by the river. You could hear the joyous sounds of children playing and the orchestra of wild birds twittering in the trees. We found a secluded spot close to the river where we laid out our picnic blanket. We'd been walking for the better part of the morning, carrying the weight of our packed lunches and some lemonade we had brought along. Mayaka River State Park is one of a kind with its wide open prairies, shady hammock spots, and the wild river running through it all. Passing by a couple of bird watchers, I overheard them talking about an unusual scene they'd witnessed that morning. They had seen quite frenzy of crows that they found strange. Crows are known to be highly intelligent and organized, so hearing that was a little odd, but thinking nothing of it, we continued our journey along the river. Being the nature enthusiasts that we are, my wife and I were familiar with most of Florida's flora and fauna, but that day we would encounter something that we were not particularly prepared for. Just as we were about to start our lunch in the most serene corner we had found, a peculiar odor wafted our way. It was a pungent mix of old meat left in the sun with an underlying hint of sulfur. I gagged a bit, looking around to see if maybe it was some sort of decomposing animal nearby but the smell quickly grew to an overwhelming stench that made our eyes water. We decided to move elsewhere. 
As we started to pack up our food, a low, guttural growl rumbled somewhere not too far away, echoing through the stillness, completely out of place in our otherwise peaceful location. The sound was unlike anything we'd heard before. Not quite the sound of a bear, but too deep and throaty for a bobcat or a panther. Before we knew it, something rustled wildly in the underbrush nearby. Despite my alarm, I tried to stay calm. I remember telling my wife it was probably just a deer, startled by all the human activity. But deep down, I wasn't so sure. We both started in the direction of the growling creature when all of a sudden the mystery beast emerged from the undergrowth. I couldn't believe my eyes. The creature, if you could call it that, stood upright just like a man but its features were anything but human. A hump back swayed with every heavy step the creature took. Its snout was long, almost canine in nature. Its chest was abnormally big, but it was those eyes, demonic and dark, that sent the cold shivers down my spine. Struggling to catch her breath, my wife buried her face in my shoulder, clearly terrified. As for me, I stood motionless. The sense of fear was so overpowering, I was frozen. Suddenly, the silence was broken again by the creature growling again. I couldn't even begin to describe the chill that ran down my spine. The initial growl soon escalated into a howl carrying through the woods. Instinctively, I clasped my wife's hand tightly in mine as I slowly moved her behind me. It sent one more glance our way, a pair of piercing eyes against the sunlight. I didn't see it at first, but the creature had a dark brown, almost black mane that draped like a cape over its broad shoulders. The creature took a couple of loping steps towards us, then stopped. You know the saying about how wild animals are more scared of you. That didn't seem to apply here. But then, perhaps just as startled as we were, after briefly looking us over, the creature promptly turned around and disappeared back into the dense woods. We quickly gathered our belongings, abandoning our picnic spot, and almost ran back to the park entrance. Both of us were strong and rational people, but this sudden encounter had left us rattled to our core. Every snap of a twig or rustle of leaves jolted us throughout the journey back to the car. As we drove home in silence, the wild river and lush scenery that we had admired just a few minutes before turned into a haunted, ominous backdrop. We couldn't run away fast enough from the park we once found peace in. In the days to follow, we wrestled with what we experienced. I began to do some research and found tales surrounding a bizarre creature dubbed as the Dog Man. That had to be what it was. No other descriptions even sound close. Even though I have a name for it, those woods will never feel the same again for us. There are things out there that simply defy belief until you see them with your own eyes like the Dogman of Mayaka. My name's Martha, a wildlife photographer who once thought she'd seen everything nature could throw at her. That notion changed one summer when I visited the forest reserves of Alaska for a project. Being that it is an isolated area, the flora and fauna were essentially untouched, creating perfect conditions for my work. Yet there was a sense of unease that I couldn't shake off. Being alone in the wilderness is something I've grown used to over the years, but the isolation in this particular forest felt different. There was a strange quietness, a type of silence that went beyond the absence of human noise. I started noticing peculiar changes in animal behavior too. Creatures that were usually active during the day seemed to disappear. It was as if they were retreating to their burrows and nests much earlier than normal. The forest didn't just feel eerie. It seemed disturbed, like the quietness before the storm. This unsettling atmosphere kept building up each day, eventually ending in my encounter with the creature. One day, I returned to my camp to find it ransacked. Oddly, there were no tracks and nothing was taken. The next few days brought an increasingly putrid smell, as if something was rotting nearby. Then, on the fifth day of my expedition, I heard a chilling sound from the dense trees that made the hairs on my neck stand up. It was a low moan intertwined with a haunting screech that echoed through the forest. 
I aimed my camera in that direction and froze. What I saw through my lens defied belief and shook the very foundation of reality. The sight of the creature was like peering into a world that wasn't supposed to exist. It was a place where nightmares came to life, where the unimaginable became tangible. My heart pounded and the camera's viewfinder suddenly felt like a shield between the creature and myself. A shield that was holding back something that could not and should not be real. Every instinct in my body told me to run from the creature that stood before me. Yet my photographer's drive pushed me to capture what I was seeing. It was a surreal moment. Despite the fear, I was also fascinated. Here was a creature challenging everything I knew. The creature was standing a towering nine feet tall. Its head resembled a deer's skull, bleached white and stripped of flesh, topped with antlers that twisted and turned like gnarled branches, casting eerie shadows in the dimming light. Its eyes glowed faintly, two pinpricks of light. Its body was a grotesque fusion of animal and decay. The skin looked like rotting flesh hanging loosely off its skeletal frame, covered in patches of fur, mold, and something darker that I dared not identify. The legs were that of an elk, but twisted and gnarled, carrying the creature's immense weight with an unnatural grace. Each step it took was deliberate, calculated, leaving behind a trail of the most overwhelming stench of death. Despite its gruesome appearance, the creature didn't seem hostile. There was a certain grace in its movements. One theory I considered was that it could be a spirit or guardian of the forest, a creature from local legends and folklores. Its presence could explain the eerie silence and the animal's peculiar behavior. The uncertainty of what it could be added to the experience, making the encounter all the more surreal and unforgettable. I barely had time to snap a few pictures before the creature disappeared into the thick undergrowth. I was left smelling the acrid stench still lingering in the air. Once the creature disappeared, I was left not knowing what to do next. After a few moments, I gathered my wits and decided to look for any remaining signs that the creature had really been there. Following the direction it had taken, I started searching for any physical evidence. Tracks, damaged vegetation, anything that could provide tangible proof of what I'd witnessed. But the creature had completely vanished, leaving no trace behind. Despite the lack of physical evidence, the pictures I'd taken were proof enough for me. After that encounter, I cut my project short and left the area. Back home, the experience lingered in a haunting kind of a way, something that is still in the back of my mind even today. The encounter profoundly affected both my professional and personal life. Now there is a newfound sense of mystery and fear when I am out in the wilderness. Every assignment after that incident carries an undertone of apprehension. Sharing my experience with you here was a difficult decision for me. I wasn't sure how others would react to such an unbelievable tale. Eventually, I decided to share my experience hoping to help me start to heal. Before this, I shared it with some close friends and colleagues. The response had been a mix of skepticism and intrigue. Despite the fear, there was a part of me that wanted to go back to find answers. The creature had turned my worldview upside down and there was a nagging urge to understand it. I feel the drive to discover more facts about what happened. The encounter with the creature has now instilled caution in me towards the unexplored corners of our world. Though it's been some time, the memory is as clear as ever. I still don't know what I saw out there, Lilith, but I know it was real, and my photographic evidence supports it. I want to share an experience I had a while back. It must have been somewhere in the early spring of 2018. I remember because the trees were just starting to bloom. I work as a park ranger in Chatfield State Park in Colorado. The park was already bursting with beautiful colors that spring. Now let me tell you, being a park ranger isn't always as glamorous as people think it is. Yes, we get to spend our time in the middle of nature, surrounded by the wilderness and all its glory, but sometimes nature can be, well, surprising. You may not know this, but Chatfield State Park is quite expansive. 
It spans over more than 1,500 acres of land, so my daily routine typically involves driving around the park, checking on things, making sure no one's causing trouble or in trouble. In a place that size, there's always something that needs attention. Back then, I was still fairly new on the job, but found solace in the nitty-gritty tasks that others found mundane. Checking fences, inspecting the trails, reporting back on the state of the wildlife, all of these were duties I treasured, not only for keeping me busy, but also for anything varied from the city life I left behind. So there I was, the air still crisp with the remnants of winter, but the bright sun promising the arrival of spring, the sound of birds chirping and wind rustling through the leaves. It all created this serene symphony that always put me in a good mood. On this particular day, I was tasked with inspecting the hiking trails on the southern side of the park. The melting snow had caused some minor landslides and our team wanted to ensure the trails were still safe for our visitors. As I was walking one of the trails, I remember feeling that the air had this unusual, damp scent, like a swamp. But there wasn't any swamp or bog in that part of the park. It was a dense forest area with pine trees standing tall, blocking out most of the sunlight. As the day started transitioning into evening, I heard the familiar hoot of an owl. Strange, because they're usually not active until later in the night. I shrugged it off as an anomaly and continued on the trail. As the light faded, I decided to finish up the last stretch of trail inspection using my flashlight. It was then that I noticed something odd. In a muddy patch, I saw footprints. Large ones, much larger than a human's. The indents weren't clear, but they looked to be three-toed, much like a bird's, but bulkier. I didn't know what to think. At that moment, I heard a rustling sound from the direction of the footprints. I turned my flashlight towards it. My heart was pounding in my chest. I was expecting to see a deer or maybe a bear. What I saw, though, it wasn't any animal I had ever encountered before. I could only catch a hazy glimpse. It was just a shadow moving against the dark backdrop of the forest. There was something distinctly off about it, though. Something not so animalistic and more human. It was definitely taller and bulkier than an average man, from what I could see. Whatever it was, it moved swiftly and silently, without disturbing the forest's nighttime peace. Its only sound was that eerie rustling noise. Before I could get a better look, it had disappeared beyond the range of my flashlight. The only remnants of its existence were those odd, massive footprints that seemed straight out of a dinosaur movie, and the unshakable feeling of discomfort lodged in the pit of my stomach. Though I have spent years working as a park ranger, I have never experienced anything so strange, so unnerving. I've seen all sorts of wildlife, even dangerous ones like bears and cougars, but this was entirely different. Whatever it was that night, it's a mystery that haunts me to this day. The encounter seemed to have lasted for an eternity, but it was over in a matter of moments. In those moments, however, my world had significantly altered. There was a chill in the air which I hadn't noticed before, or maybe it was the sudden rush of panic and apprehension that was making me shiver. I tried hard to recall whatever I could of the mysterious figure whose presence had turned my otherwise ordinary evening into a foreboding one. I mustered my courage, ventured towards the direction where I had seen the beast disappear, hoping to catch more than just the fleeting image I had had. I called out, half expecting a human response and perhaps also dreading it. No answer. The pin drop silence of the night was only interrupted by the flapping wings of a disturbed bird fluttering away from the trees overhead. This had turned into something more than just a routine trail check. My instinct told me to get out of there. The creeping fear that had been a stone in my stomach had now spread like fire. I tried to spot anything out of the ordinary, anything that could provide some clue to the baffling events from earlier. But the vast wilderness of the park responded with stoic silence, keeping its secrets from the curious eyes of a lone park ranger. In the morning, after a restless night, I recounted my encounter to my seniors. Their skeptical faces made my heart sink. The footprints that managed to retain some shape despite the rain were intriguing, but beyond that, there was no tangible evidence. It all sounded absurd even to my ears. A figure that was human, 
yet not quite in the middle of the park, leaving behind dinosaur-like prints. The conclusion was a simple, rational one. A bear, maybe, or another large predator? This was met with nodding heads, the simple comfort of plausible answers restoring the balance of our shared reality. I was far from convinced. Something had moved in those woods, something that was not of the ordinary wilderness. Over the course of the next few weeks, I found myself returning to the site often, drawn to it by a morbid sense of fascination and terror. I knew deep down what I saw that night was real. One day, out of the blue, a seasoned hunter shared his own encounter with an unnaturally tall creature within the park's territory. He mentioned large black claws and piercing yellow eyes. A chill ran down my spine when I heard the description. It was eerily similar to what I had encountered, a reptilian-like humanoid with a chilling presence. I was not alone. I wasn't crazy. Something less understood and more dangerous than an average predator was lurking in the park. The park never felt the same since that day. With every rustle of a bush or a shadow moving in the corner of my eye, I am transported back to that eerie night. 